This is video number three of Word Module 3 in the Shelley Cashman book on Microsoft Office 365. We ended up last time at the middle of page 3-23, and we're going to start up with the section on creating a business letter. Uh, there are no instructions for creating your document at the bottom of page 323, so we're going to skip over to page 324. And what they want us to do is they want us to save this with a different name. So let's go to our file tab up here choose save a copy browse we go to my desktop again and save this and this is going to be still the sc word three but then after that it becomes thomas welcome and again it's going to save it as a word document so it automatically put the docx on the end of it for us go ahead and click on save Okay, and turn autosave on for me. I'm going to turn that off. And in the instructions, we are on the bottom half of page 3-24. So we want to position the cursor in the first blank line here, which it is. And we want to make some changes in the formatting. We want to single space. The default line spacing for Word uh, is 1.15. So it's a little bit more than single spacing. And I think the reason that's there is because it actually makes the document a little bit easier to read and seem a little bit less cluttered. That's usually the default. And what we're going to do is we're going to do single spacing, though. And so there's an option for normal with no spacing. And we're going to select that. That is everything on pages 3-24 and 3-25. Now we're going to take a look at some tab stops. So the tab stops are indicated over here on the ruler and if you pause the mouse over each one here it'll tell you what the symbol represents this is implemented a little awkwardly i think in microsoft word but it's been this way forever so that's a left tab stop this is what's called a center tab stop and if you click on it we just cycle through all of the options here that's a right tab stop so you use that if you want text to be right aligned here is a decimal tab stop so you'd use that if you were lining up a column of numbers and then the next couple here, we're just going to skip over, and it eventually cycles around back to a left tab stop again. And the way that you set a tab stop on here is you simply select what you want over here, and we want a left tab stop, and then you find the place on the ruler where you want that tab stop to be located. So we're going to click on the three and a half inch mark right there. And now what happens is if I'm on a line and I hit the tab key, it will move over to that position on the ruler. And if I start typing stuff and hit enter and hit tab again, start typing stuff, because it's a left tab stop, everything will be left aligned. So these align, the left edges will line up here underneath one another. And I'm gonna go back here and we're gonna take a look at the other tab stops. He's got explanations, but he doesn't actually show you how they work. So we're gonna cycle through over here to the next one. And it's gonna be a center tab stop. And I'm gonna put that at the three and a half inch mark as well. And I, Apparently deleted the, that blank line there. I'm going to double click down here and get a new line. I want to go to the no spacing again. And I'm going to hit the tab stop. Whoops. Got to set the tab stop first. Now I'm going to hit the tab character. Slide over that point. Now that's a center tab stop, which means whatever I type at this point now will be centered underneath that mark. So if I click on this, it'll show a little vertical line. And you can see I've got equal amounts on each side of the line. So if you want stuff to be centered, use a center tab stop so let's delete that let's go back and do a right tab stop i just click one more time over here on my tab selector i'm going to pull this one off just drag it and let go and it'll that's how you get rid of a tab stop then i'm going to click on it again and put in a right tab stop at that point on the ruler now if i hit the tab key and start typing things they're going to be right aligned underneath that point so here's a couple of lines doesn't matter how long the lines are the right edge of those lines will always be right here underneath the three and a half inch mark okay so let's get rid of those let me see i want to get rid of the paragraph mark at the end so i'm going to select everything here except that last paragraph mark and hit delete okay i've still got no spacing so it's going to be single spaced which you might want to consider although the book doesn't recommend it is you might want to consider doing 1.15 for this stuff instead i think it looks a little bit better it's a little bit easier to read Okay, so we've got our 
rulers visible. If they weren't visible, the way you get them visible is by going to the view tab and turning on the ruler checkbox in the show area. So now we're at the bottom of page 3-26 and this is where we're going to put the uh, left tab stop at the three and a half inch mark. So we're going to go up here, delete the one that's there. We got to cycle through these again. So we got to do about four or five more clicks here to get back to the left tab stop. I want that at the three and a half inch mark. And I'm going to hit the tab key and that will slide me over to that tab stop. And now we are at the bottom of page 3-27. We've just pressed the tab key to position the insertion point at the three and a half inch mark. We want to go to the insert tab up here and look at the insert ribbon. And there is a date and time button up here way over here on the right and it gives us some options for inserting the date and the time we want it's it's all the same thing it's just going to look differently so this is the one that we want go ahead and we don't want this to be updated automatically the update automatically feature will work like this if i open it up tomorrow today is july 30th if i open up tomorrow it will automatically say july 31st so if you've got something you always want to have it have the current date when you actually opened and saved the document then that's what you want to turn on. We don't want that, so we're going to click on OK with that checkbox turned off. And if I come and open this again tomorrow, it'll still say July 30th, 2022. Okay, let's flip over to page 3-28, and we are going to enter the inside address and salutation. So we need to hit enter three times. One, two, three. We're back over to the left margin here, as long as we don't hit the tab character or the tab key. We'll stay at the left margin. So we're going to type in the inside address. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and type that in. And you can do the same. Okay, we finished typing in the text. And so now we're on number 9 on page 3-29. It says save the letter again on the same storage location with the same file name. So all we have to do to do that is just click on the little floppy disk icon up here to save. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a table into our document. So um, I did everything here except hit the enter key twice. So hit the enter key twice after the word dates. And now we're going to flip over to page 3-30. And we're going to insert an empty table. Number one says scroll the document so you'll be able to see the table and document window. If necessary, display the insert tab. We're still on the insert tab. You want to insert a table, you've got a couple of choices here. Click on the down arrow. The easiest way most of the time is probably just to select what you want your table to look like here using the orange boxes. And it turns out that all that we want is a three column, one row table. So go ahead and click on that. This is what a table looks like in Word. You can tell it's a table because you'll see these little symbols here that looks like a little circle with four points coming out of it. Every cell in a table has that symbol in it. And that's kind of Word's way of telling you that you're working with a table. Uh, it's not always obvious that you're working with a table. You can turn off the borders. And if the borders are not there, it looks like ordinary text. So we are now on the bottom of page 3-31. And we're going to start entering some data in the table. With the insertion point in the left cell of the table, type date. Okay, it's already there. It goes there by default when you insert the table. Let's type in the word date. And then the tab key, when you're working with tables, does not relate to the tab stops. What it does is it's a way to move you from one cell in the table to another. You can also do that by clicking with the mouse, but I'm just going to hit the tab key right now. Now we're in the second column. I'm going to put event here. Tab again, and we put notes over here in the last column. So we got the first row of our table filled up. That's the only row in the table right now, and we want to have some more rows. If you want to get more rows in your table, at the end of the table, all you have to do is go to the last cell in the table and hit the tab key. I'm going to do that right now. It will open up a new blank line for you, and you can put in whatever data you need there. It turns out that we want three more rows here. So I'm going to hit the tab key a couple times to get to the end of the line. Hit tab again. Now I've got two more rows. Hit tab again, and I've got three more rows. And the middle of page 3-32 tells us what we need to put in there. So I'm going to pause the video again and type in the data and you can do the same. Okay, we finished filling in the table and your document should look just like mine. 
which looks just like the one in figure 3-43 on page 3-32. So now we're going to apply a table style. So we've got most of our ribbon up here is devoted to styles. The default style here is basically no style at all. Just black borders and white backgrounds and black text. We have some options over here and these options can be turned on or off. So header row means that the first row will be formatted differently. Uh, banded rows means that we'll have every other row colored and first column means the first column will look differently. Sometimes we have headings in the first column here as well. In this case, we do not. So we want to turn that checkbox off. Now we want to click on the more button over here and see what some of our options are for table formats. We got a whole bunch of predefined table formats. And what we want is grid table one light accent two. And it looks like that one is under grid tables, accent three. So grid table one, light accent two is this one. So we'll get a little bit of orange in there. And you notice the header row is bold. And we've also got a bolder line separating the header from the rest. Um, we have banded rows turned on, but we the option that we selected did not have banded rows, so we're not going to get those. Okay, let's flip over to page 3-33. And now we're going to go to the bottom of page 3-33, and we are going to select a column. So we want to select the last column over here. When you are in a table, if you move the mouse to the top of a column, there's a very small area there, a small number of pixels, where it'll turn into big fat arrow pointing down when you get that big fat arrow pointing down go ahead and click and you are now selecting that last column we want that to be italicized so we're going to do a control i for italics you could also have gone back to the home tab and clicked on the italic button right here let's go back to our table design tab here it says click anywhere to remove the selection from the table. So just click and now the last column selection goes away. Now let's go to the bottom of page uh, 3-35. We're going to insert a row in a table. The actual instructions for that are on page 3-36. So let's flip over to page 3-36. And if we're in the table here, if we click in the table someplace, and then we go over to the edge here, we'll see this little plus sign show up when we get to a border between two rows. And what we want to do is we want to insert a new row here. We forgot something that needs to go in between here. So we just click on the plus sign. It opens up a brand new row for us. And the information we're going to type in here is going to be August 16th to 20th. And then tab. And this is going to be welcome week. And then tab. And then get schedule during orientation. Now your table should look like figure 3-50 at the top of page 3-37. So it says scroll up if necessary to see the space below the table on the letter. Here's the space below the table on the letter. Position the insertion point on the paragraph mark and below the table and press enter. So we're going to press enter to open up a little space there. And then we're going to type in a little more text before orientation. So go ahead and type that line in and then flip over to page 3-38. And we're going to do a bulleted list. And there's a really nice shortcut in Word for doing a bulleted list. You type an asterisk and a space, and it automatically converts that into a bullet and indents it for you and puts a tab character in there as well. If you don't want that, that's what this little button here is for. You can tell it to, let me see, and it's not staying up there for me. And I think that has to do with my uh, recording software. So uh, it does give you some options. You can turn that off if you want to. Um, that's a feature that I rarely turn off because uh, it's, it's real handy if you want to do a, a list. So uh, you type an asterisk in a space, and then we're going to type in the first line, complete housing. Complete a housing contract or housing exemption form. And then we're going to hit enter, and it automatically assumes that you want to continue your list. We've got a couple of more things we want to put in there. I'll go ahead and pause the video and type those in. So we've typed in all three items in our bulleted list. And if we hit enter at the end of this last line here, we get another bullet. But if you're all done doing bullets, just hit enter a second time, and it'll return you to normal text. So that's a nice feature of Word. So now we're at the top of page 3-39. We're going to enter a little bit more text, and then we're going to save the letter. So I'm going to pause the video again while I do that. 
So after we type it in, it looks like this. Notice that because we kept hitting the enter key every time after we got done with the new line, the formatting from the previous paragraph carried over. So this tab stop remained in effect all the way through our entire document. And when we get down to this sincerely line, we just hit tab. It takes us over to the three and a half inch mark. Hit uh, enter three more times and hit tab before typing in the name and hit tab again. And all three of these lines here will be lined up directly below the three and a half inch mark where we have our tab stop set. We'll stop here and we'll pick up with the next video at the bottom of page 3-39, working with SmartArt Graphics.